All right, so um, we did a little digression to go over summation notation and properties of summation notation because that's a tool that we're going to need if we want to sort of analyze these, these Riemann sums in a little bit more detail. Now, we kind of, we know roughly where we're at, right? We have this, let's say, area under a curve and we want to approximate and we have this idea that we're going to approximate using rectangles. And the base of these rectangles, right, um, the bases lie along the x-axis. And we want to use rectangles of equal width. Now, um, there's no real mathematical reason for doing so. There's no requirement to use equal widths. It just simplifies things for us. It makes it a little bit easier to work with the equations. Okay? Um, all right. So we want equal width. So what, how wide is that equal width? Well, um, how many rectangles are we going to use? So let's say we're going to use n rectangles, right? Uh, we know that we have this total width of, of b minus a that we have to cover. We're going to divide that into n equal pieces. Well, we know exactly how that works. b minus a over n, OK? So next what we do is we have, so we get intervals right? So our intervals are going to look like this, right? We've divided things up. So we're dividing things up into these pieces. That gives us these intervals. Um, this first a here will always be called x1. It's the first point. Then x2, then x3, and so on. Uh, this one here will be xn. This will be xn plus 1, okay? So it, we need n plus 1 points in total, right? Because the intervals are going to look like x1 to x2, right? That's the first interval. Second interval, x2 to x3. The third interval goes from x3 to x4, and so on. So somewhere along the way, we get to, um, you know, we often will refer to this as interval i. And that's going to be from xi, right? We match. These match. The first one matches. And then we add 1, i plus 1. Yeah, all the way down to the last one. So the last one, the nth interval, will start at xn. And we need one more. So we have to go one more. So n plus 1 is the last one, right? So x1 is a. xn plus 1 is b. We have all these other points in between. Okay, so one of the things that we'll notice is that delta x, right? Another way to write delta x is, well, it's the distance between the two endpoints of each interval, right? We want all these intervals to be the same. So it's x i plus 1 minus x i, okay? So that means that another way to write x i plus 1 is you go to the previous point, xi, and you add on delta x. So this gives you this sort of nice recursive formula for how to generate the points. Um, but sometimes you don't want to have to, you know, maybe you just want to know what's x17, and you don't want to have to do x1 through x16 first. Um, so you think about it, and you say, OK, well, x1 is just x1, right? Um, x2 is x1 plus delta x. x3 is x2 plus delta x. But x2 is sitting here. It's x1 plus delta x. So it's x1 plus delta x plus delta x. So it's x1 plus 2 delta x, right? And then to get to the next one, well, you add delta x again, right? So x4 is going to be x3 plus delta x, which is, well, I have two delta x. I add one more, so it's going to be x3 plus, or sorry, x1, rather. x1 plus 3 delta x, and so on, right? 
So in general, um, x i will look like x1 plus i minus 1. Notice it's always 1 less, right, times delta x, right? Or if you like, x i plus 1 will be x1 plus i times delta x. So this gives you a nice formula now for generating all of those points, right? Uh, all of this information from here to here, all this, all this detail here, um, this has a name. This is known as a partition, okay? So it's a partition. And we might give it a name, we might call it uh, delta x of the interval from a to b, okay? So we're eventually going to see how to put these partitions to use in, in creating Riemann sums, um, which is the method that we're going to use for calculating this area. First, we're going, to, we're going to pause. We're going to set up an example. We'll see how this works for one of these examples that we've been playing with a little bit already. We'll see how this formalism lets us go beyond, you know, approximating with one rectangle or four rectangles or eight rectangles and, and moving to, you know, greater numbers of rectangles. We're going to see how that works in the next video.